Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to B4 Live. Um, this afternoon, we've got a, a small uh, group um, that we've invited to come and join Mike Jennings in conversation. So, Mike, if you're there, it'd be good to good to see you. Good afternoon, Richard. I'm here. Uh, so you're an old hand at this uh, working from home, like Mike. You were, you were saying that so you've been doing this for the past eight, nine years? Yep, that's right. And so it's uh, everybody's coming around to your way of thinking. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a long time to get used to it, I can tell you. So how people are coping with a month or two, I don't know. Really? Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure it will soon become second nature. But good There's so, so many distractions. Sorry? There's so many distractions. Yeah, no, agreed. But no, great of you to uh, to give up your time this afternoon and um, got a lot of interested people looking to interact with you. So thank you for your time. Do you want to just just kick off with, um, uh, well, we, we discussed about you um, getting everybody to give us a little bit of an intro. So over to you, Mike. So um, I want to just quickly talk a little bit about the Jennings values um, and, uh, and what we did introducing those. And um, literally hopefully i can get through that in five minutes or so and then open up a conversation it'd be really good to hear from all of you about your thoughts on on our values and, and what you're doing yourself in values and then lead that on to a more informal discussion around um how we think things are going to change with the current health crisis and the very likely economic crisis to follow which i think we're all slightly nervous about um so the jennings culture can be split into three elements which is purpose values and principles uh, and they're all quite important or, or an important part of the whole um, so the purpose people talk about a social purpose purpose is important because purpose provides direction and motivation so purpose is not what you do but why you do it um, what's important to you uh, what's what drives you as a business owner <clears throat> to to do what you're doing um, in our own case we rent premises um, we, we're a business park i think most of you know and um, we rent premises so that's what we do why we do it is it comes down to being a bit um, um, disconcerted about the power of the landlord in the landlord tenant relationship and not wanting to do that and exert that in our case so it's more about uh, valuing your customers, in our case, our tenants, um, as equals to ourselves as landlords. In other words, taking the power away. So our purpose is to create an environment where people can feel valued. Um, and that's something we set up about 10 years ago. And that's how we operate the business. And if you don't set a purpose like that, then your default position is to have a purpose which is based on maximizing profit. And whether you believe that or not doesn't matter your staff will and your customers will and your suppliers will and they'll treat you accordingly at least that's my experience um, the second part is, is the values so there's one purpose um, and we have six values and um, i'm just going to if i can work out how to share this no i can't yes i can I'm just going to share the screen so you can see the um, jennings values on the screen Again, excuse me, this, this may take a little, little while. I think this should work. Come on, Mike, you did it first off on, on, in the trial. There you go. <laughs> so um, we have six values, um, and they are values around, uh, around behavior. And when I say behavior, it's about how I behave um, and how I expect, teach and expect my team to behave. And also, what we're looking for is that all the people we work with behave in the same kind of way. They, they, everyone's different, of course. Um, but so the values are quite loosely written, you'll, you'll see. But they're all about behavior. Um, so open, I won't go through them all, but you can read them. Um, but openness and honesty is really, really important because by being honest and open, you set the scene for a trusting relationship. And I, I hope you'd all agree that good business is all about building relationships and relationships lead to trust which although it's the the last the bottom of the values it's by no means the last in fact it's probably the most important value and you could argue quite comfortably that all the others lead to trust if you take for example being accommodating of people's needs being fair and being courteous is all about empathetic to the people that you're working with whether that's a team member um, 
a, a, a supplier or a customer or indeed shareholders or, in, or the outside community, all of the what are known as stakeholders in the business, treat everybody the same way and, and look for and expect people to respond in the same kind of way to you. Um, of course, the problem with the normal problem that people talk about with these values is that's all very well, you trusting someone, but what if they take advantage? And as soon as someone takes advantage of your trust, what they're doing is stepping out of line and saying, this is me, you can't trust me. So then you have a choice to either challenge them or eject them and stop working with them. But at least you know, at least you are aware of the situation quite early on in a relationship. So I'm just going to take that down now. Now, um, the third um, element <clears throat> is the principles. And we have, at Jennings, we have 18 principles. That I wrote. I'm not going to go through them all. Uh, but they are things like um, the principle of marketing by attraction rather than promotion. So this is about not about saying how wonderful we are and doing lots of advertising, but it's more of a slow burn process of um, doing the right thing by people and then people recommending you. Um, so I always view all my team are marketeers for the business. Everything they do, think and say, and write is a form of marketing um, and uh, I also think that all our customers are marketeers and all our suppliers are marketeers for the business and it's attractive I like to think the way we run a business uh, and people are attracted to us and you tend to attract like-minded people so they're they're beautiful people to work with and, and do business with so uh, marketing by attraction is one of them um, and and another one is to do with the team is um, the principle of opportunity, not role. So when we take people on, on the, in the business, whilst ostensibly there's a role to be done, we take them on for the opportunity we can afford them to improve their lives by helping them to build their self-confidence and self-esteem. And we've had tremendous success with that. And I'm sure some of you employ people would recognize that um, the value in doing that. Um, and then the third one, which is probably pertinent today, to today's discussion, is the principle of change. Um, change is something that we generally fear. We, we like the comfort of the sameness of life. Um, but we all know that change is uh, a constant. Change will happen whether we like it or not. No one could see the coronavirus um, crisis coming, of course, although arguably plenty of people saw an economic crisis coming, of which the corona health crisis is perhaps the catalyst to bring it forward. Um, but I think um, as entrepreneurial people, we are generally excited by change and not fearing it. But sometimes big change like we have at the moment is quite difficult to navigate our way through. And so the principle of change is something that I teach all of my team um, because we need to be constantly looking to change what we're doing so that we're keeping up and keeping ahead of our, not just our competitors, but just the fact that we can do the right thing all the time, bringing in new ideas to better serve our customers, which is part of the role that we cover. Um, so the coronavirus issue, which is the topic today, is, um, come as a bit of a sideswipe to all of us, I think, and we've all affected in different ways. Some people are have lost their business completely. Others are just hanging on and waiting. And the lockdown is, uh, uh, and the working from home has suited some people and not others. We have examples on the park where we have food companies, for example, um, who are, have lost all their business completely, especially those in events. Their business has gone completely. Um, and they are um, just waiting really for the relief of the lockdown and seeing what's happened. And what my team have done is they, they communicate on a regular basis. I'm, I'm talking that about at least twice a week with every single customer. I imagine you're all doing similar with your customers and offering to help and support wherever we can. Uh, but what's been really lovely is even those who struggled the most, like the events business, um, are 
not wanting to not pay the rent, if you excuse the, the double negative. Um, we've we built up a communi through communication over the many, many years, we've built up a very loyal um, uh, group of customers who the last thing they want to do is not pay the rent because they recognize that that's going to damage our business as well. So whilst we're offering that support and uh, rent free periods or half rent or whatever is, is appropriate, most of them have said thank you, but they don't need it at the moment. So we're, we're waiting to see what happens in May and in June and in July. Um, it's, it's taking it one step at a time. That's what we have to do. Um, other businesses, of course, are not really affected by it and uh, can carry on regardless. We've got one company that um, do 3D printers and they are, I believe, printing PPE equipment at the moment. So they're just a rapid change into something which works uh, and um, which they feel they can do something uh, useful uh, has been good for them. Um, so those are the kind of things that are going on. Um, I think the concern I have is um, not not that, you know, if we get to a situation where we have to eventually make people redundant, which I'm hoping, hoping is not going to have to happen, but if it does, does that mean that we're compromising our values because our, our culture is about putting people before profit? Um, and I've, I've always maintained that um, the only successful business is a business which is profitable. Um, you have to make a profit. It's not the profits that's the issue. It's what you do with the profit is what, the, what determines the culture that you're carrying. Um, and uh, whilst um, the, the key thing here, I think, is if, if people have to be made redundant, it's communicating an understanding of why this is happening and why it's important necessary and also sharing the, the the pain across the company so that all the people in the company are, are impacted in, in some way um, so that would mean uh, dividends not being paid for example it would mean uh, a cut in salaries would be across the board for example um, so that we we keep it um, keep within our culture as far as possible and in fact i think as we come through this coronavirus problem and go into a more longer term probably um, recession um, I think it's those business which which maintain their values and purpose which are the ones that are going to stand the strongest in the future so I'm going to, I'm going to leave it at that for the moment um, but if anyone's got any comments or questions or stories and then, then please far away who would like to say um, Alan you've got a question uh, yeah, Mike, can I just ask you, uh, the, the values that you put up of your business at the, at the start, were they the, uh, the values presumably before um, the COVID-19 uh, crisis? And have you been tempted to change those um, in, in view of what's, what's happening at the moment? We've had. Um, Sorry, Mike. Do, yeah. Do you think you'll? Do you think they will change um, in the forthcoming months? No, definitely not. We've had those values for at least ten years. I say at least because we established them ten years ago, but they are a statement of what we were already doing. Um, so they are my own personal values, uh, written down uh, okay. in, the, in the business context. And um, we did think over the years. I've thought about adding to them or changing some, but actually. I think that causes more damage than good um, because when you have a clear statement of what they are and your team fully understand them then it's the consistency of them of the message which which is the strength of the message so no that they won't change okay so i guess in terms of uh, what you said uh, just now in terms of the um the dilemma in terms of people before profit um perhaps that might mean that um there might be less profits in the future um but that you would you know possibly keep people on but accept that the business is going to make less money would that be fair to say yes absolutely okay yeah i think there'll be very few businesses that come through this um without making less money to be honest i agree anybody else um, like to ask mike a question 
Hi. Hi there, Mike. Hi, um, I, I could see how difficult that 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 particular um, thought process is for you because you were shifting about in your chair a little bit around, you know, how important your people are and um, the profit. And it's obviously very difficult, and you're having to make some very difficult situations, uh, sorry, decisions. Um, I don't know, it might be, have you had to go through a process to sort of come back to these values or something, something like that happened as you've gone through that process of reevaluating where your business is or has it been something that's very determined right from the beginning? Do you mean the values or, or the planning? Um, I guess I guess it's the planning on what you're going to do and the decisions that you're going to have to make. Yeah, um, well, we are uh, we are planning and I think it would be, um, I'd be surprised if, if every business owner wasn't planning at this stage. Um, you have to work out what you might do in certain scenarios because, mm. you know, we, we could be down uh, 10, 15% on turnover or we could be down 50% on turnover. And it's really hard to judge that because um, we're reliant, our, our income comes from other businesses. Uh, and it's if those other businesses can afford it, they will pay the rent. If they can't, they won't. What I do know is that we don't have any businesses that are customers of ours that would try and cheat us in some way and try and make more profit and, and by not paying the rent. That's not going to happen um, from our businesses. So what we know that um, our businesses are very likely to come to us first and say we can't afford it. Um, and we can work with them around the best way of dealing with that. But we do have to plan, I think, for a potential for much severer losses or reduced income and how we're going to deal with that. And that ultimately means reducing our costs. And, and those that we, as probably, probably all of you, those costs that can be reduced, we have already reduced. Um, but we've done, we haven't, we've, we've furloughed staff, but we have no intention of making staff redundant if we don't need to. Um, and I don't even like talking about it. You're quite right, Tracy. <laughs> it's, um, these, these are my friends. You know, these, these are people yeah. that a lot of them have been with us, um, or most of them have been with us at least five years, some 10 years. And, um, you know, it, it, I, I've watched them grow in terms of that. I was saying earlier, their self-confidence and self-esteem to become from timid people to amazing people. Uh, and, and I know that they will be fine if they were made redundant. They'd find somewhere else and it would be no problem. Um, but it's the it's the the, um, the process that you that you go through, the feelings that it brings out, and and all of that. I think it's not a question of care, carefully managing it. It's being empathetic to the damage you could potentially cause. And so the way you do it is what's important, rather than what you do. If you know what I mean. I don't yeah. have a single member of my team who wouldn't fully understand if I made them redundant. So yeah. I knew that. So. Yeah. I mean, I did some work myself on my values and um, how I want to build my business. And I've probably got more than I ought to have. But um, if I were to bring it down to three, trust would be at the top of the list. And that comes from um, building those relationships. Um, and then that is quite challenging when you're starting out, at the, you know, trying to start out building a business now, like, like I am now um but it's a very it's a different skill isn't it now we're all here online and it's a very different environment but it doesn't mean you can't do it but you know trust and truth and transparency for me would be the top three that i would come out with as being the values that i work to and you know as a principle you were talking about the principle of change for me it's about always doing the right thing even when that is really really hard um and even when nobody's looking as well so they're the sort of things that behind me as a person and the way i am i just can't help it <laughs> um, and um i think it's very important that that that's those kind of things stay as the bedrock of you as a business and, and i think alan asked earlier about would you change those principles or values and I think you're right that the values and principles don't change, but you might have to make decisions based on those where by the communication style and 
the way you approach that um, those decisions and communicate them is really important. Alicia, you should you should never. I don't mean to be um, like a school teacher or anything, but you, you should never apologise yeah. for being the person that you are. Yeah. And, and um, you know, so we. I think life is about for me. It's about full, being fulfilment. About feeling that you've done the right thing in every situation. Um, and other people might disagree. That's their problem. You know, it, as long as you feel comfortable that you've done the right thing in every situation that comes up, and yeah. you. Um, and you judge that in yourself in relation to your values. So being truthful, um, being trustworthy, um, you know, those are all important values. But of course, I would say that because that's how I run my business. But yeah, you want to be able to stand on your own, even if no one's looking, and be able yep. to say, yes, I've led a good life, don't you, at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, and what's really interesting, I think, is when, you, when you're watching the TV at the moment and you're seeing the kind of things that the larger corporates are doing, you know, the kind of bailouts that are going to the corporates and the small businesses aren't getting, or the way, there was one the other day, um, travel company, TUI, where um, it was reported that they weren't going to give a refund to the people who weren't going to have their holidays, and instead they were going to give them a voucher. Um, and you just thought, yeah, that's kind of what you would expect from a big business like that, but is it really the right thing to do? not really is it the right thing to do is give them their money back because they haven't got a holiday and give mm. them the choice about what mm. they do next tying them in with the voucher is not you know it's not really the right thing but and yet we accept it because it's the norm but that, that doesn't make it right mm. so. yeah totally thank you um thank you mike thank you tracy um, conscious that we're we're past um 3 30 mike did say he's available to stay on until uh, 345 so if you're happy to stay on um please do stay with us if you have to go then we understand um i know we have elio has a question elio do you want me to ask on your behalf or do you want to unmute and ask because i know you're having problems with your camera yeah hi richard hi mike hi everybody i hope you can hear me I'm yep, we can hear you. brilliant so oh great um I, I just wanted to ask and, and it's been a very useful discussion with regard to uh the ethos of trust transparency that we i believe all of us on this line are looking to uh maintain within our businesses and grow them along those lines um what what does mike and others think of let's call bigger businesses and others that appear to be taking advantage of uh the i don't know the business interruption interruption relief furlonging etc um um and, and using that for their own advantages maybe just to shore up profits as opposed to maybe utilising that for what the purpose was in the first place. Uh, do you want me to lead on that one? Um, I've already said a little bit about Chewy, for example. Um, I think Richard Branson was was on the uh, uh, on the TV this afternoon, uh, justifying um, why he had furloughed a lot of people. Um, I think it was um, no justifying why he was looking for a bailout from the government. And, and of course, the initial thought immediately is, well, what do you need a bet out for? You can just sell your island. You know, and so, so I think um, it's very difficult to make judgments in situations like this. Uh, and I, um, I, I tend to take it all with a little bit of a pinch of salt, what comes through on the media. Um, but I, it, you know, whether someone's taking advantage or not is um, not something I, like, I want to get too in, in, into because we all have our own opinions on it. Um, I, I do think what the government has done so far um, has been very, very helpful for small businesses generally. But there is, there, are, there is no doubt that there are some businesses that are going to benefit from it, and there, there are other businesses that certainly aren't, um, for, for whatever reason. Mainly because these um, grants and loans were rushed out very quickly without too much thought. Well, with thought, I don't want to criticise anybody, but I mean, I think it's good what they've done. Um, but I, 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 the example is um, we have a, a tenant um, who, well, the, the, the events company, for example, um, and they, they're not eligible to the £25,000 grant, which others are uh, eligible to in, in the leisure and, and um, food industries, uh, retail industry, because they're not retail but they are 100% hit by the same issues that the retail industry is hit by, but they, they're not eligible. 
and it, that's um, one of the problems with, with bringing introducing these uh, measures in very quickly. I don't think I've probably answered your question, Elio, but uh, maybe someone else has got a comment on that. Um, I'm not sure it's related to that necessarily. Um, Darren, you've got a question about um, team dynamics. Yeah, hi, Mike. Um, yeah. I just wanted to sort of pick your brains a little bit on um, the team dynamics as it, is, as, as it is at the moment and as it will be going forward with people um, remote working, people on furlough returning to work, possibly people being on extended furlough. Um, uh, we, we've obviously sought advice on um, who we need to maintain a level of operation. But likewise, because we've got people a bit like yourself, Mike, they've worked in the company and you're, they're classed as your friends, um, how, how a return to work could be or might be in regards to how they feel um, after returning from furlough. And obviously that compromises a little bit of um, where you see the values yesterday and where the values might be in the future because of um, you don't want to sort of lose that faith and that trust with people because we've had to furlough them and, and it was a bit of a pick in a team that we, we, we could maintain a, a level of operation. Yeah, I don't, I, honestly, I don't see team dynamics changing really. Um, that there's a lot of emotion, I think, with furloughing, um, which is um, under the radar a little bit. Um, so those people who've been furloughed will no doubt be in fear for their job. It is, it is after all, a job retention scheme. Mm. And if they're not needed during this current period, um, are they going to be needed after this current period? Mm. And they'll be, that's what they'll be thinking. Um, so I think it's probably important to communicate with them um, your views. But the trouble is, our views on what's go going on at the moment are going to be changing day by day in reaction to what comes in front of us day by day. So it's mm. really really hard to be able to um, to deal with that. Um, team dynamics are a, a function, I think, of um, the strength of the team in the first place. Um, so I'm sure your team is as strong as ours is, Darren. Um, and I know they're all tight. Um, and if anyone, heaven forbid, is made redundant, then um, the team will collectively support that person or those people and do whatever they can to help because we all feel it. Um, mm. And there's, alongside that, there is this um, unfairness, isn't there, of people being paid to stay at home, whereas the few that are still working are being paid, in effect, to do all the work, um, to take a risk coming into work, um, uh, and yet they're not getting any benefit for that. Mm. So there's not, that, that's unfair as well. So the, the dynamic will be tilted in some way. And I think it comes down to the leader to, over time in, in the future, to um, balance that out by how you behave, how, what you say, what you do, um, and it, treating the team in the, in the fairest way possible, I think. Mm. Yeah. Do you think that um, Jennings might be more, more so challenged by people wanting to adopt more remote working practices as well? Now that we've got this sort of almost like a free trial happening, working from home. And yeah. do you feel like that might be something that, you go, oh, it's proven we can work from home and still do our job? I, it's not, I don't think um, being challenged is the right expression. We, we already have people working from home. Uh, quite a few of the team work from home one or two days a week anyway. Um, but what we do is very much relationship uh, based and so getting in front of our tenants and so on is part of the job so we have to have face-to-face -face communication not at the moment but by in nor normally uh, not not so much for me what i do but um for the team generally yes um however i do i do believe i believe you're right things will not be the same after this uh, coronavirus crisis uh, we're all getting used to working with Zoom, for example, um, and it, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to have an annual general meeting using Zoom, for example, um, mm. and, and we may do that in the future, possibly, yeah. why, why not? Um, and certainly our office tenants, I think office tenants generally are going to be looking, or, or it would be more, it'll be more common for people to be working from home more of the time not exclusively, but more of the time. And that will have a knock-on effect in all sorts of ways, won't it? There'll be, you know, you know how much uh, little traffic there is on the road at the moment. Mm. But if people are going to be working from home more regularly, 
that the traffic won't bounce back to pre-coronavirus amounts, for example. Um, and you know, cars won't be used so much. There won't be there'll be less demand for cars, less demand for fuel, um, you know, and all the other things that go with that. The, the, the knock-on effect will be quite potentially quite dramatic, I think. Mm. No excuse for late deliveries, Aunt Darren. <laughs> <laughs> um, brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Darren and, and Mike. Darren, other Darren, I'm not sure whether you had a question at all for, for Mike. Me? No, I'm, I'm quite happy just uh, listening, but the things that you say uh, resonate quite a lot with me. Mainly, um, I, it's different for me. I've, <clears throat> I, I work for myself. I haven't got any staff. Um, but I like the principles of honesty, trustworthy, um, good, good management, good leadership. Uh, and it's nice hearing, uh, hearing you say that. Uh, I like your ethos, uh, what you say. And uh, yeah, there is going to be a, certainly a lot of changes going forward. Especially when it comes to sort of like commercial buildings, I, you know, I know I talk to people now who are saying do they need the size buildings they've got now, mm -hmm. you know, so that's going to have a, uh, a dramatic impact, I think, going forward for commercial businesses because mm -hmm. they can think, oh, yeah, I can half my half the size of my my building because half my staff can work from home, which is, will have a, an impact on the sort of area you you work in. Yeah, I think um, it's quite likely that rent values would come down, especially with in offices. Um, but if there's you know, any, any price is a function of supply and demand, isn't it? And mm. if supply is the same and demand is falling, which it will do in this, the ongoing recession, then rent prices will have to come down. Mm. Quite, it's quite okay. It's the case. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think a lot of people have been surprised, but me personally, you, you, do, you do a swap report of you know, what your strengths and weaknesses are. No one would have even put this on their list. <laughs> you know? So I think people who have benefit, benefited from it have, have been very fortunate. I don't think it was planned. It was just like, oh, Jesus, you know, this is actually yeah, yeah. giving me an opportunity. Um, now, the next businesses who have, it's, been, it's hit them, but they've been in the right business to diversify and shift, you know, quite simply. Uh, and there are other businesses who just cannot shift. It's too, they're too, there's too, they're too static. You know, you know, there is nowhere to go and they're, they're the ones who are going to suffer the worst. So for me, e-commerce, dramatically changed you know it's my business has increased i've benefited from everyone being at home um i know darren aston you've started doing deliveries people are working from home so there's a you know there's an increase in people wanting office chairs and people want to get up set up ergonomically at home so that's an opportunity for darren to diversify so if you're quick enough you can get in there and, and make an impact so um but printers for example which is what i used to do they're kind of that's that's a tricky one you're stuck, you know, um, people aren't printing stuff, you yeah. know, not unless you do the two meter tape stuff. <laughs> well, I think um, businesses and, and individuals, uh, we're, we're, we're changing our habits, aren't we? We're not buying what we want anymore and borrowing money to do it. We're buying what we need. Mm. Um, and any money we, we, we're, we're able to keep, we're saving it. Because mm. um, there's, there's this fear of, of losing our jobs uh, or our businesses. Um, and so we, we didn't have that two months ago and, and now that fear's kicked in, anxiety's kicked in, so our behaviour is different. And um, Richard, shall I, shall I close up now? Well, you, I was just going to quickly ask, um, thank you Darren for, for that question. Um, Dad, Ed, did you have a question at all for Mike before we close? Um, Mike, I just uh, obviously appreciate all the values that you said. Um, that you uh, run your business by, but um, you did say at one stage also that it was essential that you had a profitable business. Yes. Um, have there been any instances when your values have been compromised because uh, you wanted to maintain profits or is that a complete no-no? Um, so we have a system of putting people before profit, um, um, but we don't, but a culture of doing that, but it's not, um, so there is no point doing things which are massively unprofitable where there's no positive gain. Um, but the idea of having a, a social purpose, Colin, is to say, you know, everybody in the business can make a decision if it's on purpose. Uh, and if you don't have a purpose, then your purpose will be to maximize profit. And your team will, will if they're allowed to make decisions, will make decisions based on um, if I can make the company more money, 
I'll be looked upon favorably when it comes to appraisal time, right? Um, and that decision might be uh, against um, the relationships that you've carefully nurtured with your customers, for example. On the other hand, you don't want to be saying, we'll do this even though we're going to lose loads of money because we're honoring our values or, or our culture or our purpose, because um, that would be a, a equally a no-no as well. Uh, and so each person in the team has to be able to work it out for themselves with support and help. And they have, yes, they have to be, they sometimes make mistakes or they do things in a way that I wouldn't necessarily have done. And then you'd have to talk to them about it and say, okay, you wouldn't, you could have done it this way, you could have done that. Um, so I, long answer to your question, but you, you, you don't have a business at all if you're not making money, right? We all understand that. Um, there are things that you would do if you're putting people first that you wouldn't do if you weren't pre putting people first, I think. Um, so, um, so I, I, um, yeah, so it's not, it's not compromising values or purpose to do that. Um, but you wouldn't want to do it to such an extent that you would end up losing the business and then everybody loses out. Fair enough. Yeah. It's a good question. Thanks. though. It's a difficult area uh, and one that each person has yeah. to work it out for themselves and trial and error is quite important. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we need to get your light for your face. You look like Darth Vader down there in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much, Mike. Really appreciate it. You wanted to just, just sum up? Yeah, I, I said that earlier um, when uh, Darren was speaking because um, uh, I was starting to say some of the things I was thinking of saying just to, just to close up. And I wanted to say a little bit about thoughts for the future because I, I think things are going to change. So um, Darren introduced the idea of... Um, being innovative and those businesses that can change and those that can't. Um, and it is my view that, um, and I've seen it in previous recessions, by the way, amongst our tenants, that um, small businesses are very quick to make changes. You know, because you're running your business yourself, you don't have a, a board or anything that you're know, a management system or a long hierarchy to work through. You can make decisions quite quickly. And so if your business is hit by a uh, in, at the moment, a virus, but any sort of uh, issues like this, you react fairly quickly to a change what you're doing to accommodate whatever's going on. So, okay, so, um, and business owners on, who are entrepreneurial don't fear change. They're not surprised by change. Um, in fact, they're excited by change. And I have plenty of people, including myself, where if change isn't happen, happening, we get bored. And we so we then therefore um, stir things up, rather you know st stick a stick in the team and stir things around a bit and see what comes out just to just for a bit of excitement and uh, because change is exciting. And the other thing is to recognise where there are opportunities, spot opportunity, and embrace uh, the opportunities. And I, I think that's something that we can all be doing no matter what. But I, I do accept what Darren says. There's some people where some kind of businesses where that's just not possible. Um, and it, my son, for example, runs an events business and he's, it, all events have been canceled. So there's nothing he can do, but so what's he doing? He's living on air um, and um, he's looking to um, sorting out what he can uh, with uh, marketing staff and promotional staff and, and communicating with existing customers and booking in events for autumn onwards, because that's what you can do. So you, you're you're taking the you know, being positive about it. I think um, so. Small businesses can adapt quickly, uh, so we're in a good position. I think the local economy as well, which we're all in, um, not just our local economy, but local economies generally are going to benefit from this um, recession as well. Um, and we're already hearing that more people are using local shops and farm shops than going to the supermarkets, for example. Localism is gonna become a big thing, I think. Um, and there are a lot of people in, in communities, whether they're villages or towns or streets, um, where there's a lot of volunteering going on and a lot of community spirit. Um, and this is all about, those, those, kind of pe those people are going to want to favor purchasing from businesses who treat people right. 
as opposed to buying from those large corporates who are actively pursuing profit uh, over people. So I, I think there will be a change um, uh, as, as we go through this, as I said, health recession and then an economic recession to follow. Uh, and over the next couple of years, we're going to see a rise, I think, of the dynamism of small businesses and the, um, uh, and the, the importance of the local community and localism generally. And it's something I've been looking for for a long time. Uh, and I, I see that as a positive for the future. Uh, Maybe wrong, but um, that's my views anyway. Mm -hmm.